Lena Sarsour came under the spotlight in 2016 and eventually became widely known in 2017 as an intersectional feminist and Muslim activist. Owing most of her fame to Trump's presidential campaign, she was praised and pushed by Bernie Sanders and his kind, aligned with Black Lives Matter, co-organized events that all begin with Muslims, and became co-chair of the Women's March 2017, whereupon all the shitstorm about her started. It was a pretty good shitstorm because uh, people started after that digging out her past and brought many things that need to be talked about to light. But left-leaning people who align with her and who march with her usually don't want to talk about those things. Or they think uh, it's too much to talk about and it's just, it's just hateful to do that. Lina Sasso is being disavowed by some individual feminists. But there are still too many who support her, including the Women's March, the organization that claims to be against hate and for human rights and women's rights. When all her evil ways were exposed, people even started an I march with Linda hashtag and supported her, while dismissing every evil thing about her as Islamophobic attacks. But that's what they usually do. When you uh, say factual things about such people, you are called an Islamophobe, a racist, a hateful person, and uh, a xenophobe, and all those other usual things. You would expect that a woman who leads the Women's March and becomes one of the big... <laughs> faces of feminism in America would also support Western values and would be totally compatible with Western values and women's rights in the West. If you made your research about Lena Sasso thoroughly and you were honest to yourself and don't support such a horrible person, then you probably know most of the things that I'm going to talk about except my comments about it. Otherwise, please don't be so surprised. We're talking about an Islamist feminist. I'll just start and go into it, and we'll list a lot of things that should be sufficient to form an opinion about her, and I will start with the tweets. First and foremost, there is the most controversial thing. In 2011, she made a tweet about Ayan Hirsi Ali and Brigitte Gabriel, in which she said, Brigitte Gabriel equals Ayan Hirsi Ali. She's asking for an ass whipping. I wish I could take her vaginas away. They don't deserve to be women. The shock factor comes in when you realize that Ayan Hirsi Ali is a former Muslim and a victim of female genital mutilation. The suffering she went through is incredible and the oppression that intersectional feminists talk about is a joke in comparison. Of course Linda was aware of the fact that uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali fled from her country and was a victim of female genital mut mutilation. But she still made that tweet. When this tweet came to light last year, she deleted the tweet, but it can still be found in the Internet Archive. I made it easy in case you want to have a look at it. The link is below in the description. When confronted about this tweet, which Linda never stood behind, she deflected in a very ugly way. Hi. So, um, this question is really important to me because I believe that women's rights are human rights. So I really want to know under what circumstances it's acceptable to say that I wish I could take their vaginas away. They don't deserve to be women. And just to give that context, that's one of your tweets off your Twitter. So, let's give some context here because you know we have, uh, this is an event organized by an Asian American, right? Let's just get some, let's get some context to this, what's going on here. Celebrating a community, right? talking about communities of color who are being directly impacted at this moment. And I have a young white man in the back who is not directly impacted by any of the issues that I mentioned. Who thinks he's the right thing. So let's, 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 let's clarify a copy and paste that he got from a right wing blog. He doesn't even know if it actually came to my Twitter account because he had a screenshot of it. He never actually went to my Twitter account to see if it's actually there, right? That never happened. But let me just say this to you. You're college students. I was in my 20s and when was that, 2011? People say stupid shit sometimes, right? I will be judged by my impeccable track record for standing for black lives and immigrant rights and women's rights and LGBT crises. You judge me by that record and not by some tweet that you think I did or did not tweet 10 years ago or seven years ago, whatever it was. So that's my answer to your question. Next. And the stupid crowd claps. 
What else can we expect anyway from such events? If they had any dignity, they would face her past and her present ties and views and speak up against her. So she attacked Brigitte Gabriel and Ayan Hirsi Ali in a very ugly, in a very disgusting way that contradicts heavily with her new uh, intersectional feminist views. But she refused ever since to apologize or at least to stand behind her tweets. That's not enough. This tweet in which she tr threatens Bridget Gabriel is not healthy for her either. Girl, do I want to take down Bridget Gabriel? She said she walks into stores in Arlington. Let her try walking streets of Bay Ridge. Well, what would happen, Linda? <laughs> The next thing that contradicts heavily with her ideas, especially with her new uh, intersectional feminist notion, is the fact that Linda Sasso loves Sharia law and expressed that so in multiple tweets. If you have any basic ideas about the Sharia, then you should know that it is probably the most unfit system for women. But I will make a video about Sharia law. Some of her tweets about Sharia are here. Some person called Robert Freeman asks, May I ask, if you have an opp opportunity, do you plan to vote for Sharia law in the United States? Lina Sassua answers, I don't drink alcohol, don't eat pork, I follow Islamic way of living, that's all Sharia law is. Well, that's definitely not all that Sharia law is, and please explain Islamic way of living. Like being thrown off buildings because you're gay? In another tweet she say, if only my fellow liberals understood what Sharia law actually is. SMH. <laughs> Please explain, Linda. We are worried about Sharia law taking over the country. Hobby Lobby ruling shows there is something more to fear and Islam isn't it. <laughs> You'll know when you're living under Sharia law if suddenly all your loans and credit cards become interest-free. Sound nice, doesn't it? Linda Sassua thinks that uh, interest is just a thing that is there for nothing. At the same time, she supports socialists. If you are still paying interest, then Sharia law hasn't taken over America, just saying. <laughs> so, interest-free, that's that's a big deal. That's why Lina Sassua thinks it would be quite uh, okay if Sharia law actually took over, as she says it here, America. Dear Linda, the people of America would rather die fighting than being taken over by Sharia law. Sharia law is misunderstood and has been pushed as some evil Muslim agenda. Some Muslims are oppressors for sure. <laughs> some. A feminist that supports uh, minorities, religious freedom, women, but also supports Sharia law and thinks there is no problem with Sharia law taking over America. <laughs> I will make a video about Sharia law very, very soon. The next point is a point that many of her type have in common. Those who claim to be for justice and equality, those who pride themselves constantly with their ethnicity and their background and their skin color, but are upset and yell when the white person does the same thing. In so many tweets in the past, she expressed her hate for white people and Jews. Lina Sasso is very much against generalizing Muslims, but apparently she has no problem generalizing white people. White folks forgot when pilgrims came here fleeing political persecution. Freedom to worship, cool for them, not others. <laughs> How many times do we have to tell white women that we do not need to be saved by them? Is there a code language I need to use to get through? Yeah, Lina Sasso was always as arrogant as she is right now, as you can see. Her refusal of help from white women was apparently given up quickly when she was offered the co-chair position on the Women's March by a white woman called Bob Bland. But racism is not a problem to her because she is uh, a minority. There is no such thing as reverse racism. Racism is bigotry plus power. The group that doesn't have power can't be racist. <laughs> That's possibly the stupidest thing that I'd read so far by her. And that means something. When she needs to accuse others of racism, it's suddenly a big problem again. You won't be surprised. Lina Sarsour's anti-Zionist position is, as usual, a heavily anti-Semitic one. Not only that, but anti-Zionism is also not very suitable for someone in her position. Since Zionism is the ide ideology to create a home for Jews in their homeland. As an intersectional feminist, she shouldn't really be anti-Zionist. Nothing is creepier than Zionism. Challenge racism. Normalize justice. That's what Lina Sassua says. In another tweet which is heavily anti-Semitic, she says only Jews in my notifications every night are ones that condone violence against Arabs and are cool with mosques being attacked. 
I have never seen such Jews, but Jew-hating Islamists like Linda see them everywhere, all the time, even in countries where no Jews exist, so, somehow. I don't know. It's probably some kind of Islamic magic. In another tweet, she shows us what real courage is. A child throwing stone at the police. Well, to be fair, she's not the only one with such twisted views. That's the common Muslim stance, and that of millions of others. She's also a conspiracy theorist, believing that the CIA staged the underwear bomber. And she is deeply in love with the Nation of Islam, a black supremacist, Islamic supremacist, extremely anti-Semitic, extremely homophobic, anti-American and misogynistic group that is currently led by a horrible human being called Louis Farrakhan, who is also a friend of Linda Sassoua and the other two women's march leaders. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the Nation of Islam is a hate group, but the heavily biased SPLC also supports Linda Sassoua, despite all these links and views, and blames her horrible, hateful personality on Islamophobes. The SPLC is not the only entity supporting her. She also received the Champion of Change Award from the Obama presidency. Here are two screenshots that I found pretty, pretty important to point out her love for the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. In one, she says, When we write the history of Islam in America, the Nation of Islam is an integral part of that history. In another screenshot, she makes a comment on a photo with Carmen Perez, one of the women's march leaders, and Louis Farrakhan. She says, The brother does not age. God bless him. What a love for such a fucking racist. And here finally is a golden tweet in which uh, Linda Sassou retweets a tweet that wishes that God may strike down her enemies. It says, I pray for Linda. May God fortify her and strike down her enemies where they stand. Amen, peace and power to you, Linda Sassou. This tweet is perfect for Linda Sassou. There are so many other sources of information that we can use against Linda Sassour. If we just look at, at the media, we can find so many things about her. If you read more and more about Linda Sassour, it looks like she never stays out of ugliness. Let me just give you some examples. According to this very old New York Times report, uh, Linda Sassour's family members, many of them, were um, arrested because they had ties with Hamas and with otherwise Islamism and Islamic terrorism. According to Lina Sassour, she can't have any ties with Hamas herself, because otherwise she wouldn't have received the, the Champion of Change Award from President Barack Obama. Lina Sassour also supports the BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, a global campaign that was founded by Palestinian activists and is heavily supported by Hamas. Many reports so far have revealed that there are uh, very certain relations between Hamas-linked charities and the BDS campaign. And Lina Sassour is unsurprisingly a supporter of that campaign. Together with Lina Sassour, the other two women leading the Women's March are, are also heavily anti-Zionist. And they don't accept Zionism or Israel flags within their movement. According to Linda Sarsour, you can't be uh, a feminist and a Zionist at the same time because feminism is global and you should also uh, care about the women in Palestine. <laughs> of course, she totally dismisses the, the oppression of women in the Islamic world by Islamic systems and Islamic leaders. She has nothing to say about that. In yet another controversy, Lina Sarsour was seen together with a convicted terrorist who was responsible for the bombing of a supermarket in 1969 where two people lost their lives. And Lina Sarsour was on an event of her, hugging her. Lina Sarsour, the feminist who stands for peace against oppression, uh, embraces a convicted terrorist. And in the last one, again, she can be heard and seen talking against the Jews. She was invited to an anti-Semitism and the struggle for justice panel at New York City's The New School. And when the topic came to her controversial reputation, she used the following words. If what you're reading all day long, morning and night, in the Jewish media, is that Linda Sassou and Minister Farah Khan are the existential threat to the Jewish community, something really bad's going to happen, and we're going to miss the mark on it.
So again, she blames the Jewish media for her uh, very bad reputation and even of that of uh, Louis Farrakhan. And Louis Farrakhan is a heavily anti-Semitic person who even used words before, like when it's God who puts you in the ovens, it's forever. That is a warning to Jews. It is an approval of the Holocaust and threatens them with much more. He also praised Hitler as a very great man before. And he made numerous anti-Semitic statements. And here I want to come to the next topic. The Nation of Islam and the Women's March. You would think that Linda Sassua, as a Muslim, uh, would be the only one having ties to the Nation of Islam. But that's not all. The other two leaders, Carmen Perez and Tamika Mallory, also are tied to the Nation of Islam, and they are also friends with Louis Farrakhan, who is, uh, as a reminder, heavily anti-Semitic, homophobic, anti-American, anti-white, and heavily misogynistic. The three women's march leaders, the three people at the top of this uh, new feminist movement in America, all have ties to the Nation of Islam and to Louis Farrakhan. And this has become a, a controversy only fairly recently. Lina Sarsour, Carmen Perez, and Tamika Mallory, all of them have ties to the Nation of Islam. They have been heavily criticized even on the left for uh, these ties they have, and for their views, and for their friendship with Louis Farrakhan, and none of them accepted to apologize for it. When asked about it, Lina Sarsour made her usual deflective uh, speeches, she said that the brother, Minister Farrakhan, made so many things, so many good things, and uh, that they are brothers in faith and, 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 and in their cause against the oppressors. <laughs> Tamika Mallory is being forced right now to resign or to denounce Louis Farrakhan, and she's not planning on doing so. She says that she is black, and the Nation of Islam is where her people are. So by her people, she means black. And the Nation of Islam are black people. That's why she needs to be with them, no matter what they do. In the next moment, they cry about racism. She even wrote a piece, uh, not apologizing a little bit, and justifying her ties and her friendship with the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. A few days ago, she even attended the Savior's Day, uh, an event that is organized by the Nation of Islam and led by Louis Farrakhan, who made a speech in which he in which he openly again talked about the Jew. He said, the powerful Jew is my enemy. And he makes those speeches all the time. And he said much worse things, as mentioned before, about Jews all along for decades. If you just go on his Twitter page, you can see a lot of garbage about the Jews. Uh, he accuses the Jews for everything. And Tamika Mallory has no problem with that. She doesn't want to denounce him. Carmen Perez, the third leader of the Women's March, was also asked about her ties with Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. What she had to say was that uh, Louis Farrakhan is a man who did many great things, and of course not every man is perfect. <laughs> she dismisses all those horrible things about him with the words, not every man is perfect. She dismisses heavy anti-Semitism, violent anti-Semitism, anti-white notions, misogyny, extreme homophobia, and anti-Americanism. All of these things just by saying, well, uh, not every man is perfect, but he also did great things, so it's no problem. But the main builder of these relations is Linda Sarsour, who has always been a good friend and a fan of the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. So how can it be that today, the Women's March, the leading organization against Trump's America by feminists, has ties with, them, with one of the most horrible organizations tied in American history? The Nation of Islam is not just a hate group. They also have a history of very shady relations. Do you see all the backlash that Trump receives or that others receive once they just retweet um, a white supremacist group or, or, or any group that is not even white supremacist? Do you see all the backlash, all the hate, all the uproar that emerges when right-leaning people or other people who are not supporters of the far left have any ties or are in any way supportive of nationalists, of white nationalists, of the KKK, of neo-Nazis or others? Why do we not see the same outrage about this? Why can papers like The Atlantic, that I usually like, 
write such apologist pieces in which they uh, explain and rationalize why the Women's March leaders don't apologize and don't denounce uh, Louis Farrakhan. Why can Linda Sassou easily play her Islamic victim card that Louis Farrakhan also plays if you check his Twitter account and can easily get away with this? Why is there no pressure? Where are all the loud feminists? Why is no one speaking up? Why is Linda Sarso not forced to apologize for the comments that she made on Ayan Hirsi Ali and Brigitte Gabriel? If anyone else was in that position and was a right-leaning, they would have been forced to apologize and they would have been forced to resign by now. Why doesn't the same thing happen to feminists? Why does the same thing not happen to Muslims? Why does the same thing not happen to a black, a Latino and a Muslim leader of the Women's March? Why are such horrible things, why are such horrible ideologies and notions just justified and downplayed when they emerge on the left? How can Bernie Sanders still be such a supporter of Linda Sarsour when all of these things happen? When the supporters of Bernie Sanders all claim to be totally rational people who are all against racism and hate and homophobia and, and misogyny. In this video, I don't even want to talk about all the stupid claims that Lena Sassou makes about her faith. And I don't even want to go and debunk them or anything like that. Apart from all of this, Lena Sassou also has a history of denouncing people and attacking them when, she, when they criticize her normally, calling them alt-right. She even called Jake Tapper alt-right. <laughs> and she has lots of such things and she is never forced to apologize and the, and the loud feminists in America have nothing to say about any of this they only asked him quite politely right now to denounce Louis Farrakhan that's all and it will probably not even happen and they will still get away with this as you can see the women's march was organized by a white woman and three women were put in charge. An Islamist with shady ties called Linar Sarsour. A black woman who thinks, sh who thinks that the nation of Islam is her place. And Carmen Perez, who is rather silent, but also has ties with them. And despite all the horrible things that came out about Linar Sarsour, nothing is happening. And, this, and the whole thing still goes on. I will be so surprised, but also be quite happy if uh, these three leaders resign or are forced to resign. But what I expect is that with such a gullible crowd, with such gullible supporters, there will probably be another Women's March 2018 and Tamika Mallory, probably Lina Sarsour, probably Carmen Perez will, will lead the Women's March again and nothing will happen. Because if you are on the left, you get away with anything. When you are on the left, you can say the Jew is my enemy and you can still get away with it. If you are on the right and you say Islam is not a religion of peace, then you are uh, possibly forced to resign or you are killed somewhere. <sighs> I began this video with such a weird humor, but now I'm here. <laughs> I'll just go out and yell a bit more. Thank you for watching. If you like my cause and my content in general, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I would very much appreciate it. You can very easily sign up through the link in the description and can pledge a monthly amount of only one, two, five dollars or even more if you want. I appreciate every support very much. This was my only video for this week because I'm quite busy this week and traveling. But next week I will come back with very big stuff. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Have a great weekend and stay away from Islam.